Now that we've completed the configuration and testing of the SMB network, it's time to complete the configuration of the ISP network. In addition, we'll create a large campus network. Some people like to climb mountains. I like to build planes in the air. Now, one thing to note about this topology, I'm building it on the fly. I'm changing it based on the feedback that I receive and also on things that I decide to do. So it's not a scripted topology or scripted lab. It's really done on the fly. So expect problems as we go along, but that will hopefully allow you to learn things. So at this point, we've configured iOS V Router 1, Dynamips Router 2, iOS V Router 2, Dynamips Router 3, and Dynamips Router 1. We now need to complete the configuration by configuring these routers in the ISP network. So I'll start with Router 3 and open up a console. Router 3 is an iOS V router. So it's running a virtual iOS advanced enterprise K9 software. So I'll configure this with a host name and let's be consistent with our other routers of iOS V router 2. So host name iOS V router 3. This router has various interfaces that I need to configure. So I'll quickly configure those and then I'll configure BGP. So interface gigabit 00, zero no shut IP address 172.16.6.2 and I'm using slash 24 masks here. I know I've had some complaints about using slash 24s in a separate part of the network. I'll use slash 30s. Gigabit 04 needs to be 172.16.5.2 slash 24 mask. Interface gigabit 03. IP address 172.16.13.1. Interface gigabit 02. IP address 172.16.12.1. Interface gigabit 01. IP address 172.16.11.1. Interface gigabit 05. IP address 172.16.8.2 slash 24 and I need to configure a loopback on this router of 1.1.1.6 slash 32. So show IP interface brief. IP addresses are configured on the various interfaces. I forgot to no shut gigabit 04 so no shut that. Show IP interface brief again. There are our IP addresses on the physical interfaces as well as the loopback. Interfaces are all up, up. I'll save the configuration. Now this router is running within the ISP autonomous system. So I'm going to enable OSPF on all interfaces on the router. So router OSPF 1 network and I'll simply enable OSPF on all interfaces in area zero. So show IP OSPF interface brief. We can see that OSPF is enabled on a lot of interfaces. Show IP OSPF neighbor. We're getting some neighbor relationships already. Let's check router 3's configuration. There were some mistakes in previous videos that I'll also fix in this video. So show IP interface brief. We've got various interfaces configured, including fast ethernet 01. Show IP OSPF interface brief. OSPF is running on all interfaces, including this interface. Originally, I was gonna have router one in the autonomous system, but I moved it out. So we need to make this interface passive. So let's verify that that interface is passive 
we don't want to form neighbor relationships with customers. So again, I'm working on router three in this topology, F0 slash zero needs to be passive. So show run section OSPF. Okay, so we did make that interface passive, that's good. Show IP OSPF neighbor. We've got two neighbor relationships, one to 1.1.1.3, 1 .1 which is the route reflector, that's good. And we've got a neighbor relationship to 1.1.1.6, 1 .1 that's iOS V router three. So that's good as well. So the neighbor relationship is established here. I'll check the configuration on the route reflector. So here's the route reflector, show run pipe section BGP. Now originally, again, this router was gonna be in the autonomous system. So 1.1.1.12 1 .1 1 was going to be configured as a, a BGP neighbor. That's no longer required. So router BGP 65,000, no neighbor 1112. So show run section BGP. We've now removed that neighbor. That's good. Show IP BGP summary. We've got established relationships. Notice the state is blank to three neighbors, so that's good as well. So we've fixed that one mistake on router two. Show run section BGP, that all looks good. There was a mistake, if I remember, on router two. So show run section BGP. This network command should actually be network two. I'll simply remove that network at the moment. So no network, 111 mask like that. So show IP BGP. We are learning about the loopback of router one through OSPF. RIP failure means that we've got a better route. So even though we're learning it through BGP, in the routing table, OSPF will take precedence. So the OSPF route supersedes the BGP route. So we have a rib failure in the BGP routing table. That's expected. Let's check router four. We need to configure this router as well. Show IP interface brief, no configuration. So interface F0 slash zero. No shut, IP address 172.16.7.2. Interface F2 slash zero, no shut. IP address 172.16.8.1. Interface F1 slash zero. IP address 172.16.10.1. Interface F0 slash one. IP address 172.16.9 dot two slash 24 mask show IP interface brief. We've got IP addresses configured on F0 slash zero, F0 slash one, F1 slash zero and F2 slash zero. Before I enable OSPF, let's configure a loopback of 1115 slash 32 mask. And now I can enable OSPF on all interfaces in area zero. So show IP OSPF interface brief. OSPF is enabled on all interfaces. We're getting some OSPF neighbors. So show IP OSPF neighbor. Two neighbor relationships are established. One to router three, that's the route reflector and another one to iOS V router three. So we've got two neighbor relationships there, that's great. Let's go back to iOS V router three and check the OSPF neighbor relationships. Now earlier when I was testing this, I was having problems between 
the iOS V routers and that's happening again. So I'm having problems with traffic between these two iOS V routers. So as an example, show IP interface brief on this router shows me that I've got this IP address configured on this interface. On the other side, notice we're getting a lot of neighbor down messages, too many retransmissions. There's definitely a problem on some interfaces on this router, specifically Gigabit 03. So 03 is having a problem. Show IP interface brief. This interface is causing problems and this looks like a GNS3 problem. At the moment, I'm using GNS3 2.1 beta 1 and that could just be related to this version of GNS3. As an example, I can ping 172.16 6.2 but I can't ping 6.1. On this side, I can ping 6.1 but I can't ping 6.2. Let's confirm the configuration. Show run interface gigabit 00. That's the configuration on this side. Show run interface gigabit 03. That's the configuration on this side. Over here, I'll run CDP and enable CDP on the interface. And I'll do that on all other interfaces just to make it easier. to verify things in our network. So show CDP neighbor. No neighbor relationships yet. Show CDP neighbor here. I do see the CDP neighbor coming through on this interface. So I see iOS V router three, but no other traffic is being transmitted. So as an example, here we're seeing a lot of errors. OSPF is notifying us that there are too many retransmissions. Show CDP neighbors on the side. Shows us that we see the neighbor through CDP, but no IP traffic is being transmitted across that link. So again, if I ping 172.16.6.1, that works, but pinging 172.16.6.2 fails. Now this is the advantage of having multiple redundant paths in BGP. If one of the paths is causing problems, BGP can simply use an alternate path to the loopback of the neighbor. I'll troubleshoot the GNS3 problem at a later time. It could be related to this beta version of GNS3. I'm not gonna to worry too much about trying to fix GNS3 at this point. I'll leave that link as a broken or dodgy link in the network. If it causes problems, I'll shut the interface down.